made Jesus unto us. Do you know what he made you? We're going to learn, perhaps learn, uh, a little bit about this this morning. Surely he's not going to exhaust the topic. But being conscious of the benefits received, we are thankful in this week of Thanksgiving. Today, I'll be frank with you, I am thankful and grateful that several years ago, listening to... Everybody here know what a cassette is. Sam, do you know what a cassette is? Oh, okay. Several years ago, listening to a cassette, Kenneth Copeland was speaking, and to this day, I only remember one word out of that whole sermon, and that is the word made. And here's how my logic works. All right. My reasoning went like this. If God made me something, it was his choice, his gift, his desire, his joy to bless me. Was I willing to receive and acknowledge it? I set a course to find out what I had been made. I found things like this. I was just going to quote it to you, but in for you that don't know, in my notes I give the guys, and sometimes girls, <laughs> they are in blue if I'm not going to use them on the screen, red. So I had them write red, and then Bill circled it in red. Now look, look at this. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. You don't, do you? <laughs> but our sufficiency is of who? All right, now here comes verse 6. Remember, your sufficiency is of God. Who also hath done what? Made us. Made us. What did he make us? Able, sufficient as, enabled us as ministers of the New Testament. Did you know that? Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. We all have been made that. Anybody that is born again, new birth, we are his child, and he made us able. There was another one. I was made, made the righteousness of God. Now here comes something. This word made in the Greek comes in many different, comes in different forms and flavors, and uh, it has different purposes and destiny uh, the res for the results in our lives. I made something. I made it. All right? Now, God made Jesus huh. unto us. And the verse I'm about to give you and share with you is the verse that I spent probably the most time on. And it goes like this. It's 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him, or of God, are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Wow. Now there's... Am I made that? God made Jesus unto us. Without Jesus, you don't have that. Can I say that to you gently? With Jesus, he has made us. Us. All who are children of God, family of God, he has made us. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your upbringing is. I don't care any of those things. You have been made wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. All right? I've told you this once in the past, I remember, and I mentioned it to Dale this morning on the phone, and he sends greetings from the Ukraine. Do you see that last word down there? What does it say? Redemption. 
You know, are you ready for this? You, you say, whatever you're going to tell us wasn't lies on your part. I found that out very quickly. Here's what I said to him one day, to the Lord. I said, uh, if that's a list and it's in sequence, redemption's on the wrong, is in the wrong place. <laughs> you say, I would have never have done that. <laughs> well, hello? Who's, you know what I heard back? <laughs> to tell you what I heard back, very quickly, he adjusted my thinking to such a place that I henceforth will probably remember it the rest of my life. The last enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. I am redeemed, and the final redemption will be the transformation from that to incorruptible and immortal. All right? He knew what he was doing. <laughs> Why do you guys smile when I get caught out like that? Uh, but that's all right. You, <laughs> you wouldn't have done that, would you? No, to say redemption was out of place. Okay, here we go. Now with this in mind, so uh, the new birth doesn't produce a changed life. It produces an exchanged life. Exchanged. That is to say the Lord doesn't make our flesh wise, righteous, sanctified, or redeemed. Instead, he, Jesus, becomes or is made of God to be our wisdom, our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. In the new birth from above, we become, here's just a list of things, a uh, brief list. We become the household or immediate kin of God. We are a holy temple. We are a holy dwelling in the Lord. We are the habitation, the dwelling place of God. We become or are joined, united as one spirit with Jesus. One, a single one to the exclusion of another. Today then, each one of us are thankful to be the household of God, the holy temple of God, the habitation of God, and one with a Godhead. Thankful, aren't we? Amen. Absolutely true. So our our actions and attitudes of life and living is determined by the expression of Jesus living through us. The expression of 1 Corinthians 1.30 is the manifestations of Jesus, what's his, his wisdom, and so on it goes. From this verse, there are characteristics of life and living chosen by God. See, he chose to make you these things. He chose. What your choice is, choose him. All right? We're chosen by the Father himself, then our life is a living union with Jesus manifesting himself through us. Jesus, or John in 1420, Jesus is saying, at that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. That's how the situation is today. Jesus is in the Father. The Father's in Him. We're in Him. And I'm in you. Some question what day that will be. I'm just going to go on record this morning. I think it's the day of resurrection. Uh, before our, began our spiritual life with the indwelling Godhead, Jesus died, carrying my sin. Then he arose to life, and he seated with the Father. I was, you and I were dead in our sin. The new birth made me alive together with Christ. I joined Jesus. I rose with Jesus, and the Father seated us together with himself. That's better than the seating chart I used to get. <laughs> you got the point. I mean, I got to be under the teacher's desk, you know, 
I got invited to the front. These guys sit here and smile at me. They never was invited to the front. Was you ever invited to the front? No. Were you ever invited to the front? Or did you not confess? <laughs> okay. This guy started smiling from the beginning. You was invited to the front? Uh, almost. <laughs> almost. Okay. Uh, it was always by invitation. We didn't voluntarily go there and take that position. We were invited to present ourselves. Wow. Okay, the next two verses define this union with Christ and our Heavenly Father. These verses also will reveal we are dependent on Christ, never on ourselves. Ephesians 2, 5, and 6, very familiar scripture. I have no idea how many times they've been read here. Even when we were dead in sins, hath, past tense, quickened us, or made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and did what? Made us set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been made to do that. And this is not a penalty. This is a blessing and a benefit. All right? And you're willing to go. Absolutely. Heavenly places indicate not only a location, but also a position of authority, seated with Jesus at the right hand of the Father. So today, thankful are we for our new birth that joins us as one spirit with Jesus, our seating with Jesus and the Father, with their life and authority residing in us. Grateful, are we? Amen, yes. Since we are resurrected with Christ, seated with him in heavenly places, what is true of him is also true of us in our new born spirits. We can and should do the same, oh boy. We can and do, we can and should do, we can and should do the following. John 14, 12. Even, or verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, we believe on him? We do, don't we? We do believe on him. Verily, verily, truly, truly, surely, surely. <laughs> That's what those two verily, verily say. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also? Is that right? Jesus is speaking here. Because, why? I go to the Father. In the process, he took us along, so to speak. Mm, that's neat. So, let's go back. Let's return to 1 Corinthians 1.30. Let's refocus on made. But of him... Are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, made, defined, by to cause to be by strongs, to generate, to become, or come into being. Munson's Dictionary says, to exist by creation, appointed and established. So you have been appointed and established, Jesus was, to be wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. We could calmly just sit here and say, he's talking about me. Jesus was made that for me. When I don't know, can I draw on his wisdom? I draw on his righteousness now. Sanctification, yes. Redemption, yes. God made Jesus these spiritual qualities unto us. We have the qualities because we have Jesus. All right? 
It can, these qualities cannot be separated from the person of Christ himself. With Jesus we become, or are made, created, established as truly wise, truly righteous, truly sanctified, or holy, and truly redeemed forever. These may not be fully developed in each one of us, but here is the crux of the matter. The life seed of the word given to us by God's choice and telling us what God's choice is for us, this living seed has been planted in us and we are good ground. I'm good ground, right? I'm good ground. So the seed produces 30, 60, and 100 fold, correct? So, okay, so it's producing in each one of us 30, 60, or 100 fold. These things are, are, are true. I, I don't care what our situation is. The girls were probably about yay so. And I remember they slept in bunk beds when we were on Marvin Street in St. Joe. I went in there besides those bunk beds one day and, and knelt. You know what I asked for? Wisdom. Wisdom. I only, we only had two. <laughs> Think about that. One wisdom which man has long sought for, God gives in Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says we have the mind of Christ. Two, righteousness. And it covers and removes the past, P-A-S-T, and brings right standing or pardon for today. God sharing with us his very own righteousness in Christ Jesus. Sanctification. In the present, I'm set apart as holy. Partakers of his or God's holiness. Let us add these, the words of Jesus saying, or the words that explains Jesus to us, Jesus offering, sanctified us once for all. We've been sanctified by Jesus' offering. We're also perfected forever. Perfected forever. Amen. Redemption future defeats the last enemy death and brings us into a realm of incorruption and immortality. Are we thankful? And we are thankful. We will we'll be shouting Glory. Glory. You can even shout it. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Amen. There's cool. Jesus was also made a curse for us. Oh boy. Galatians 3.13. Let's take a look at this. I'll try. Christ has redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. The law came when you couldn't live it. It came with a curse. What did it maintain? Everything negative that you don't want. In the end, spiritual separation from God. Do you want any of that? No, it's, it's, it's the things that you, uh, you think about that you don't want. You don't want them. What happens when they show up? I've been redeemed. I because Jesus was made a curse for who? Us. Christ Harvest Ministry sitting right here. Sure, it's the guy down the street as well. It's the church worldwide. 
It's the body of believers, whoever they are, wherever they are. Christ was made a curse for them. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. All right? You have a place to go to. You have a, a place of assurance. You have a place that you can mention that this is stated as simply as possible. Jesus Christ substituted himself, his perfect life, for man's sinful life. Okay? He substituted his obedience to God for man's disobedience. Grateful are we. Thankful. He bore man's sin and punishment so that man might stand righteous and perfect before God. Jesus Christ bore the curse of the law for us. The purpose for Jesus bearing the curse is to open the door of blessings to all men. He forgave the sins of the whole world, an open door, welcoming the whosoever will may come. His bearing the curse of the law was the way God fulfilled his promise to Abraham, that all nations would be blessed in him. Christ bearing the curse of the law is also the way God gives the promises made to Abraham to the world. Thankful, we are blessed. We are made because Jesus was made by God for us. All right? For freedom, Christ made us free. Therefore, stand firm and unwavering. Galatians 5.1 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, or the freedom, wherewith Christ has made us free, to liberate, to exempt from the law, sin, death, and spiritual death as separation from God. Christ sets at liberty the oppressed, the crushed. Be not entangled or ensnared again with a yoke of bondage. Don't take to yourself something that is not yours that Christ has become for us. Okay? You say, is it simple as that? Can I say, I think... Can I say, let me see, how am we going to phrase this? I think the reality of the, of the word of God is to take it simply. By believing it, simply. How do you come to him? You come as a child, simply. If mom and dad promised to be the young one, Something, you expected to get it, didn't you? No question. Just think about our Heavenly Father has promised his children certain things. And he's bold about it. He, puts it, he writes it right in the book. Why can't we simply pull up a chair and say, that's mine? You say, I got an enemy. Yes, you do. But understand, he's defeated. When Jesus rose from the dead, Satan was defeated. Was he? Was he not? And you've been rose, you were risen from the dead spirit, with spiritual life. True? You've been put in a place of victory. Wow. Wow. Don't be ensnared again with the yoke of bondage. Thankful are we as free, liberated, absolutely righteous, free from transgressions. I am a freeborn child of God without the yoke of bondage and slavery. Cool? Amen. Liberty gives us freedom to act, believe, and express oneself. Spiritually, physically, and legally free from confinement, servitude, and forced labor. Thankful we are. Made us, let me do this with you. He made us highly favored in the beloved, according to Ephesians 1 6. Let's take a quick look at this, and it's very quick. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us 
accepted in the beloved. That Greek word is only used twice in the New Testament. All right? The other time it's used is highly favored. Mary has nothing on you. All right? Nothing. She was highly favored, you're accepted. Highly favored in the beloved. To the praise of the glory of his grace. See, where does the praise, where does the glory go? It goes to him. We, we get to move with him, in him, and he moves through us. Amen. Thankful are we. We've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Highly favored, made accepted in the beloved. Okay, next. The mystery hidden now is made manifest. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Let's do this. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest. Munson's Dictionary, rendered apparent, declared, displayed what had been hidden or unknown. Thayer says, by words or deeds or any other way that manifests this to his saints. So the, the, the issue here is that this mystery is manifest to the saints. It's been uh, revealed to the saints. It's been uncovered for the saints. Walk in. Stop. Don't say, I don't understand. It may be true for the moment, but say, I'm going to understand because the Holy Spirit is the guide into all truth. He will reveal what is spoken, has been spoken, that Jesus said. Jesus, who is the Word, made flesh. Wow. To whom God has made known by declaring or certifying, what is the richest glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the living union, the hope of glory. Hope. Hang on. It's the confident expectation or anticipation, not wishful thinking. All right? Matter of fact, I think just the other day I read it as assurance somewhere. Hope is, is an expectation or belief in the fulfillment of God's promises. Glory is the nature and acts of God in self-manifestation. What he is and does as he reveals himself, particularly in Christ in the days of his flesh, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Thankful are we. The mystery and the glory are now made manifest, revealed to the saints. Amazing. They that are of the church of the firstborn have spirits made perfect. Hebrews 12, 23. To the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the judge of all men, and to the spirits of just men, what? Made perfect. I didn't, I read it. It's authorized by the God himself. The church of the firstborn, Jesus, the firstborn from the dead. The church are members of the firstborn, also raised from the dead, which are written in heaven, members of the firstborn's church. His body had their names recorded in the Lamb's book of life, in heaven. Jesus, the firstborn, was the source of the beginning or the origin of a new species that never was before. Do we recognize that? Never happened until Jesus provided the means by the choice of God. The beginning, the origin of a new species that never was before. New creatures, a new creation that Paul kept emphasizing. To the spirits of just men made perfect. It advances a person to final completion of character, completion of its kind, fully developed, Munson's Dictionary says, made, brought to the goal, completeness. By one offering, he has perfected forever those that are sanctified, set apart, made holy. Are you set apart? You're made holy. 
Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't listen to the voice that says that's not you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Can I make it clearer? Don't do that. Shut that voice off. Dial down. Dial it out. Tell it to take a hike. Don't listen. Thankful are we that God made Jesus unto us. And this is just a few of them. There is more. If you want to explore it, you explore it. This morning, in closing, a verse of celebration, 1 Peter 2.9. But we are, you are, a chosen generation, or kin. You are God's kinfolk. You are, we are, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, kings with physical authority and priests with spiritual authority, a holy nation set apart and different, a peculiar people, a people belonging to God or his possession, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Here Peter is testifying that this is what we have become, that we have been made. Father, thank you. May, may there arise a recognition within us each and every one of things that, that you have made the Son for us. And may as they become, a, as we become aware of them, may we enter them or may we receive them, may we live them as your life through us. We need, I need, a continual recognition that spiritual life is hidden in me, only it's not hid. It's there with all kinds of benefits and goodness and mercies that have been stored up for me and mine and ours and, and so on it goes and to the world. We are, we are stewards of the mysteries of God. We are the householder or the king, if you will, with a capital K. We get to distribute the benefits of the king's provision. Enable, we are enabled to do that. It's already happened to us. You give us the spirit of God to fill us and send us on the way to reveal truth and empower us for service. All these things has, has been put to our account. May we draw from it as you make us aware, as you take us step by step through this life. We are not guilty. We decide that we're going with you. Thank you. We're not guilty. We are not unworthy. We chose you. You chose us. We chose you. And you enabled us by your choice. So that makes us worthy. You chose us. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Thank you, Father. These are truths. May they resound in us and through us. May they shake, shake us, shake our families, shake our city, shake our country, shake our, uh, our countryside, wherever we are and wherever we go and wherever we're at. And may it just spread outward, onward, and the manifestation of yourself with signs and wonders following. 
Why not? That's what you said the gospel will, should have following it. Well, work your work divinely. And we follow you because in ourselves, this is impossible. But with you, all things are possible. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.